ಶ್ರೀಯದರ್ಶನ ಮಂದಹಾಸರುಚಿರಾಜ್ಞಾಂಬುಜ ಪೂಜಿ ಸುರನರೊ ತೈರ್ಮುದಾ ಧರ್ಮನಂದನಮಹಂ ವಿಚಿಂತ ಧರ್ಮನಂದನಮಹಂ ವಿಚಿಂತ ಶ್ರೀಗಣಶ್ಯಾಂ ಮಹಾರಾಜನೀ ಜಯ ಸುಪ್ರೀಂ ಆಲ್ ಮೈಟ್ ಯುವರ್ ಬಿಲೌಡ್ ಘನಶ್ಯಾಮ್ ಮಹಾರಾಜ್ ಪಾತ್ಮೆ ಕಠೋ ಲಿಬ್ರೇಷನ್ ಪೂಜ್ಯಪಾತ್ ಗುರುಜಿ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಆಲ್ ಆಫ್ ಯು ಡ್ಯೂಟಿಸ್ ಜೈ ಸ್ವಾಮಿನಾರಾಯಣ ವಿ ನೋ ಭಗವಾನ್ ಸ್ವಾಮಿನಾರಾಯಣ ಮ್ಯಾನಿಫೆಸ್ಟೆಡ್ ಆನ್ ದಿಸ್ ಅರ್ಥ್ ಫಾರ್ ದ ಲಿಬ್ರೇಷನ್ ಆಫ್ ಕೌಂಟ್ಲೆಸ್ ಮಿಲಿಯನ್ಸ್ ಆಫ್ ಜೀವ್ಸ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಫಾರ್ ದ್ಯಾಟ್ ಹಿ ಕೇಮ್ ಹಿಯರ್ ಅಲಾಂಗ್ ವಿತ್ ಹಿಸ್ ಮ್ಯಾನಿ ಮ್ಯಾನಿ ಡಿವೈನ್ ಮುಕ್ತೋಸ್ ಫ್ರಮ್ ಅಕ್ಸರ್ ಧಾಮ್ ವಿ ನೋ ಮ್ಯಾನಿ ಸಂತೋಸ್ ಥ್ರೂ ಹುಸ್ ಲೈಫ್ ದ ಪ್ರೀಚ್ ದ ಮ್ಯಾಸೇಜ್ and because of their lives many of their lives also engage into divine fellowship of bhagwan swami narayan today let we see some other santo who were come with bhagwan swami narayan himself from aksardham and how they preach the satsang perspective to the people and they engage more and more people into the devotion of bhagwan swami narayan raghavanand swami he was such a great sant he travel in many and different villages and towns to preach bhagwan swami narayan's divine message who will come into his contact he always preach those people about bhagwan swami narayan supremacy as well as his message how one should live perfect human life on this earth who were the spiritual aspirant they all accept those wisdom of swami they all believe that this sant is true and finally many become a devotee of bhagwan swami narayan once raghavan and swami while traveling in different villages and towns after many days after many months he came into a small village of bar patodi the village was not to be but many devotees lived there and for worshiping daily the devotees they themselves made a small mandir in the village and in the mandir in the morning time as well as in the evening time all those devotees gather in the mandir and they engage themselves into aarti stuti dhun katha varta and all these activities and whenever santo come to the village sant also stay there in the mandir for many times many days and those devotees they also took to uh, took the advantages of santosh katha varta meaning sant samagam so raghavan and swami came to this village and santo stay there in the mandir santo stay there for several days and after evening aarti santo preached the devotees there were two senior devotees in the village one is kadu vavadia and the another was ala bhagat kadu vavadia's family all of the family members they were the devotees of bhagwan swami narayan but ala bhagat he was a devotee of bhagwan swami narayan but his father he was not a devotee he was not a satsangi so once ala bhagat came to the mandir for darshan and satsang and even after come uh, finished the all the 
or daily schedule meaning aarti stuti katha varta everything is finished even all of the uh, other satsangi devotees they leave the mandir still alabaga stay there in mandir because alabaga knew that now this is very good time for me because santo stay here in the mandir and santo did not come again and again so now let me stay here for more time for santo samagam and he even sit there in front of santo and ragwan and swami himself talk him the talks regarding maharaj supremacy maharaj greatness his divine powers in this way ragwan and swami stay there uh, stay in the village for more times but swami noticed one thing that ala bhagat regularly come to the mandir but his father never come to mandir then once upon a time ragwan and swami ask ala bhagat ala bhagat i cannot see your father in the mandir did he not become a satsangi then ala bhagat said swami my father he had no any kind of addiction or bad habits but he still did not accept bhagwan swami as a bhagwan he did not believe our satsang fellowship then ragwan and swami said no problem ala bhagat please call your father that santo is calling you in mandir so if you say that santo calling you then he definitely will come then ala bhagat <coughs> went his home the next day he requested his father that santo really uh, calling you for satsang then ala bhagat's father once said oh, it's okay let we go to mandir to meet your swami then ala bhagat and his father came to mandir after having darshan of maharaj ala bhagat performed also dandavat and darshan of ragwan and swami and other santo his father also sat in front of swami ala bhagat introduced him that this is ragwan and swami and this is other santo and then first ragwan and swami talk about bhagwan swami and his divinity this divine fellowship how one should live according to the scriptures in many many ways ragwan and swami preach maharaj divine message to this alabaga's father after some time after preaching in this way ragwan and swami finally ask alabaga's father now this is what we have to do for getting benefit of this human life now if you are really accepted these teachings of bhagwan swami narayan and even after listening this much talks regarding bhagwan swami narayan's divine power if you understand at least something then please become a satsangi even more than that ragwan and swami ask alabaga's father what is your problem not to become a satsangi and why are you not ready to wear this kanti of bhagwan swami nar if you are really satisfied with our satsang fellowship then please become a satsangi and accept this kanti wear this kanti around your neck this is a symbol of a duty of bhagwan swami nar then alabaga's father he said swami i have no problem i have no problem to become a devotee of bhagwan swami narayan even i am also ready to wear this kanti but i have one condition i wear this kanti only if you give me a promise then swami asked him don't worry i have no problem i am ready to give you a promise any kind of promise 
tell me. Then Alabaga's father, he said, Swami, I have no problem, but I wear this country only if you give me a promise that on the same day and at the same time where this country broke down, you, along with Bhagwan Swaminarayan, come to take me into Akshardham. Then Raghunan Swami say, it's okay. This is my promise. At whatever time, whatever place, doesn't matter. But if your country, country broke down at the same time, Maharaj will come to take you into Akshardham. Then after this talk, Alabhagat's father, he became a satsangi, he took a vartman from Swami and we are country. And, def, uh, and daily he also started to come to mandir regularly. He performed puja of Maharaj and chanting Bhagwan's holy name and perform and he meaning he totally become changed. He become a devotee of Bhagwan Swaminarayan. He devoutly engaged himself into devotion of Bhagwan Swaminarayan. Every day, early morning and evening, both time he also come to mandir regularly without failure for any single day. In this way, day after day, months after months passes. And after about one year past of this incident, then once upon a day, Allah Bhagat and his father, they both work into a field. And as in the field, they have very hard work. And as they were working very hardly, so accidentally, anyhow, Alabaga's father continued, broke down. Now, he said, Allah, let me go to home because my country is broken down. And according to Raghavan and Swami's promise, he'll definitely come with Maharaj to take me into Akshardham. Then Allah Bhagat said, no, that's not, that's not the case because <coughs> Swami only told you because you become ready to wear this country. Then Allah Bhagat's father said, no, if you have no trust, you have no faith in Raghavan and Swami's words, then you do not accept those words as a true. But I have firm faith in his words so please tell uh, please let us go to our home then both alabagad and his father they went to their home and in the home alabagad's father he said to everybody meaning everyone who was uh, who were living in the home he called all of the family members he said to chant the Swaminara and Dhun and as all of started to do Dhun at the same time Alabaga's father he said now Maharaj and Raghavan and Swami and many other Santos and devotees were present here and according to Raghavan and Swami's words his promise now Maharaj come to me to take me into his Akshardham and I happily I'm going to Akshardham with Maharaj. Saying these words, saying Jai Swaminarayan to all his family members, Alabhagat took his last breath and he went to Akshardham in this way. So this is what Raghavan and Swami's <coughs> power of his words. Once he said, I give you promise, if Alabhagat's father, he had a trust, he had faith in words of Raghavan and Swami. Then Maharaj will come to take him into his Akshardha. And in the same way, if we keep firm faith and trust in words of our Sadguru, then we will also get the same benefit like that of Alabhagat's father. The another incident The many other santo we know at the time of Bhagwan Swaminarayan. 
and even after Bhagwan Swaminarayan's disappearance, there were many santo who stay on this earth who came with Maharaj. Nrsihanan Swami was such a great saint, and we know daya, compassion. That's the main and foremost divine qualities remain in each and every saint. So, Nrsihanan Swami was great saint who has acquired, who has naturally acquired all those qualities which is only described for Bhagwan in the scriptures. And all of those divine qualities, all those devotees, they even experience in Nrsihanan Swami's life. Nrsihanan Swami, he was not a preacher, meaning he mostly not did the katha in public. But his personality was such that whoever come into his contact, they definitely become engage in Maharaj because that was the power of his saintliness and many devotees come to the darshan of Maharaj and after that they also do the darshan of Santo and the other devotees so at the time of Maharaj many devotees come to the darshan of Maharaj and they also engage in the uh, darshan of non Santo So uh, many devotees, but one of devotees who who lived in Garuda, his name was Lakhu Kandoi. He also come regularly to have a darshan of Nrsihan and Swami. He had great affection for Nrsihan and Swami because he experienced divine peace within while he was doing darshan of Nrsihan and Swami, and that's why. He regularly come to have a darshan of Nrsihan and Swami after darshan of Maharaj. Once Nrsihan and Swami asked Lakhu Kandoy, Lakhu, how is your financial situation? Lakhu Kandoy, he was very poor financially. And he run a small shop. He sell a sweets in a shop. And he had no too much income. So he was very poor. And that's why he replied, Swami, my financial situation is very tough. But still everything is going very smooth because of Maharaj's mercy. Then Nusyanan Swami became quiet for some time. And again he said, Lakhu. I want to give you one small seva. Then Lakhu said, Swami, that was my pleasure. If you give me any kind of seva, I am ready to do it. It is my great fortune that you, you even you have many devotees, and still you give me this, uh, give me the chance of doing this seva. Please, Swami, tell me. Then Swami said. Lakhu, every day, from the next day, every day, whenever you come to Mandir for Darshan of Maharaj, every day you come with her some sweets. Then Lakhu Kandai, he become very happy because his business was to make, uh, was to make a sweet and sell it. Now, from the next day, every day, Lakhu Kandoi, he come with sweets every day. And he gave every day a bowl of sweets to Swami, Nrsihan and Swami. And Nrsihan and Swami, he offered those bowl of sweets to Thakurji. And after, after offering Bhagwan, Nrsihan and Swami, distributed all those sweets to the, some santo and devotees. Every day, Lakhu Kandoi, he came with sweets. He gave sweet ball to Swami, and Swami offered it to Thakurji and distributed prasad to 
to everybody. But Rusyanan Swami never eat any single piece of sweet. As many days passed, many months passed, then one of his disciples' son, he asked to Rusyanan Swami, Swami, you know, Lakukanda, he was not a great merchant. He was very poor devotee. And even after knowing this, why are you giving this seva to Lakhukandoy? Even you did not eat a single piece of sweet, then why are you, call, uh, why are you asking this much sweet from him? Then Swami say, you do not understand anything. I have mercy, too much mercy, and I can understand all the situation, but I want to make Lakukandoy. I want not to. Rem uh, I w I would not like to uh, Lakukandoy remain in the same financial position. I want to make him a wealthy person. And that's why I offer his sweet to Maharaj, and I also distributed this prasad to some santo and devotees, so that anyhow. His wealth, his property, his things come to use for Maharaj and Santo and devotees. So by this, his future, Lakukanda's future, will definitely be changed. And you will see in some short period of time that he will become a wealthy person. And according to Nusihanan Swami's words, after some time, the situation totally changed. Lakhukandoy, he become a, uh, his uh, selling of sweets increase day by day, and after some time, he become a wealthy person. So this incident, this incident gives us the message that whenever any gr great sant, like here Nusi Hanan Swami, commanded to come with a ball of sweets to Lakukandoy. In the same way, such a great son, whenever give us any agnya for doing something, then at that time, we should not believe that that son give me this agnya for his benefit. Or do not think anything. Just think whatever the, whatever the son told me to do that all only for my benefit. If we understood, if we understand in this way and follow our Sadguru's Agnya and remain firm, believing his true form in this way, never doubt for his any single Agnya or any single action, then Whatever he de whatever he said to do us, and if we follow his agnya, then we will definitely get tremendous benefit. Not only for only for this world, but also we will enjoy divine pleasure of Maharaj, eternal bliss of Maharaj, and f and finally we will also enjoy the divine bliss of Aksardam after death. So this is what. Our non santo, meaning santo of Bhagwan Swaminarayan's time, their divine power, that whatever they speak, that become true. And whoever have a faith and trust in those santos' words, they got a very, very tremendous benefit. Now, only time is changed. The same santo is here for us. If the same santo is here and the same santo also tell us the same thing to do, meaning the same kind of agnyas or our agnya not to do and for do something. So if we follow with the firm faith, faith and trust in the words like that of Allah Bhagavad's father and Divya Bhav, like that of Lakhukandoy. If 
we accept those agnya with these two things from faith and divya bhav then we will definitely enjoy the same kind of eternal bliss the bliss enjoyed by the devotees at the time of bhagwan swami narayan by saying this jai swami narayan shri ganeshyam maharajani jai meeting or else then I could be upset. But uh, that's on प्रभु तव मूर्ति विनोदकारी पलपन विसरे नहीं जो विसारी जुगल चरण सोल चिन्ह जेह नजर समी पे रहो अमारिए ह नजर समी फेर हो अमारिए घनश्याम महाराज निजे हरि कृष्ण महाराज निजे स्वामी नारायण भगवान निजे सुप्रीम ऑल माइटी आवर बिलवेड घनश्याम महाराज द पाथ मेकर टू आवर लिबरेशन आवर डियर पूज्य गुरुजी पूज्य संतो Puja Bhagat Ji and all of you, Hari Bhaktos, Jai Swami Narayan. There's one thing that each and every person has to go through on this earth. There's one thing that each and every person fears. There's one thing that no one on this earth can run from. You're probably guessing what that is. It's death. It's something that's going to occur. Maybe for some tomorrow, maybe within 10 days, maybe within a year or five years or 10 years or 50 years or 80 years. But it will occur. It's going to happen just like that in a flash. We won't even know it and it has already occurred. Right now we live lives where we don't see this black monster. We don't see that it's creeping behind us second by second coming towards us and haunting us every day, waiting for its turn to come and take us. But we have a choice as satsangis, whether we want death to take us or we want Maharaj and Puja Guruji and Santos and Muktos to take us. That's a choice that is in our hands. The choice of death is not in our hands. But who will take us is most definitely 
within our hands. It's within our reach. And that's why in satsang, we practice such kind of dharamniyam, bhakti, sansamagam. Try to attain various types of virtues so that we can overcome that death in the form of a black monster and we can be taken by Maharaj and Guruji to his Akshadam, which is eternal. But in order for that to occur, what is the process? What are the steps? What needs to be done? Just like in science class, if you're in lab and you have to do an experiment, you have to perform the scientific method or there is a process. In that process, first you have to pretty much analyze the experiment, what, it, what are you doing? Second, make a hypothesis. Third, perform the experiment. And then finally, analyze the data and come up with a conclusion. It's a process. You can't jump to the fourth step without it. But going back to our topic for today, what is the process of Bhagwan taking us to Akshardham? How does that work? What are its, you can say, mechanics? What are the elements? Well, in order to find that out, we have to look inside the prasangs of the devotees of Bhagwan Swami Narayan in their time. And, of course, in present time. In the past, maybe a couple, two years, two or three years in the past, if we go, we can still find such kind of prasangs even today where these leading devotees show us that death is definitely going to take us, but in the fashion where we go jumping to Akshardham, we go happily to Akshardham instead of those who are fearful and who do not want to leave this body, this earth, this world, this realm. Because they have attachment for their possessions. Looking at that perspective, let's take a look at a prasang that occurred in the Bhakta Chintamani. The name of the prasang is always there at the end. Pranvalab, a Brahman from Amdavad is traveling to Nasik. Nasik is a, a city in India. Unfortunately, Nasik was overcome with a caloria epidemic. And soon, Brahmalab too became its victim. Caloria is a type of a disease that occurs. And due to that, obviously, it, the only outcome is death. There is no cure for it. So while he was going there, he developed this disease in his body. He left his body right there and he, he died. He left his body and Maharaj sat him on a divine chariot to take him to Akshardham. He was a devotee of Bhagwan Swami Narayan. He believed in him. He had firm faith in Bhagwan Swami Narayan. So what does Bhagwan do? What he does is he comes in a divine chariot. He comes down from his Akshardham and when that devotee is ready, he takes his devotee, the atma, meaning the soul, not the body, and sits them on the chariot and takes them to Akshardham. However, before they made their way there, Maharaj asked, do you have any final wishes? You know, Bhagwan likes to test his santos and devotees in many different various ways. So before leaving this earth completely, just like how in an aircraft or more, more so a spacecraft um, or a space shuttle that's going off. Before you go off into black space, you're still in the atmosphere of the earth. In the same way, Bhagwan was still in the atmosphere of the earth, almost leaving to go to deep space and Akshardham, so on and so forth. And Bhagwan asked Pranvala, do you have any final wishes? Let's see what happens. Pranvala replied, 
I want to tell everyone that you have come for me. People are saying that the sickness gave this Swaminarayan Bhakta an inauspicious death, meaning the people who were around him found out that he died from caloria. They were blaming Bhagwan Swaminarayan that due to Bhagwan Swaminarayan, I, meaning Pranvala, de developed this disease. And due to that, it's inauspicious to become a devotee of Bhagwan Swaminarayan, a follower of Bhagwan Swaminarayan. I want to correct their misunderstanding. So Pramila was in, obviously, the baksh, the side of Bhagwan, and he, he wanted to prove that Bhagwan Swaminarayan is true. He is not false. That Bhagwan has come. God has not come. Not death. Not anyone else or anyone else. But Bhagwan himself has come. Due to me performing devotion, having faith in Bhagwan, he has come at the end of my time and is ready to take me. See, if we look at it in a perspective where our whole life is kind of like a test, a paper that Bhagwan gives us from the beginning till the end. Now, there's many, many questions on this paper. Some are easy, some are tough. Yes, there is extra credit, there's multiple choice, there's fill in the blanks, there is matching, there is anything and everything you can find. The hard questions are the ones that we go through tough times in our life. The easy ones are we are having a great time in our life, the ups and downs of life. In that metaphor, it's like a test, but at the end of our test, obviously the last question when you fill it in, you pretty much take a deep breath and submit your paper to your teacher. Your teacher grades the paper and gives your score back in a couple of days, maybe a week or two. In the same fashion, when you live your 60, 70, 80, 90 year, 90 year life on this earth, Bhagwan himself grades that paper. How much have you done? How much devotion have you done? How much bad things have you done? How much rules have you broken? All these things are weighed into account. And then Bhagwan gives a score. In that situation, for Pranvalab, his score was an A+. Plus because Bhagwan came. All his life, he performed the devotion of God. He followed the rules of Bhagwan. And due to that, Bhagwan gave him an A+. Plus. But let's see what happens. Of course, Marad said, let me bring you back to life. So, Branula replied, and he said, I want to prove to everyone Bhagwan is right. So, Bhagwan granted him his wish, and he brought him back to life. Now, at that very moment, Branula was, just to clear up, in, the, in, in Hinduism, for rites and rituals, for uh, the process of what happens to the body after the, the soul has left the body, there's cremation. So for the cremation process, uh, there is wood that is taken and stacked up, and the body is placed on top of the wood, and uh, various uh, different kinds of, uh, uh, you can say liquids like oil, ghee, clarified butter are put on, and then it's lit on fire and the body is burned. It's a ritual, it's a process. So Pranulov's body, was lying on, you can say, the pry, on the stacks of wood. And the person that was, he had just lit the fire of the torch and was just ready to touch the pry. And before that, Bhagwan threw Pranwalab's atma back into his body. And due to that, Pranwalab, right there, he came back to life. Something that we, you can say as mere humans, cannot believe. But these aren't the works of any ordinary being. We have to understand these are the works of Bhagwan, And this is actually a true prasang that happened. And obviously, Bhagwan is Bhagwan. He can do whatever he likes. So what he did was he threw Pranvalab's atma back into his body. And Pranvalab, he was flat. And he 
came right up. Obviously, the people around him, they became so frightened because they were like, I thought he's dead. We checked his, you can say, vitals. We checked everything. What happened? And he became, he, he came back to life. His body was on the funeral pyre. All that was left was a fly was a flame. Just then, Pranvalb sat up. I've come to tell you, Pranvalb started, that Bhagwan Swaminarayan has come to take me on this, uh, to his abode. Currently, death is running rampant, meaning it's running crazily in Nasik. So, to be saved, chant Swaminarayan, and you will live. Surrender to him, and he will come to take you at the time of your death. Now, in the Vachnamrut, Gadada, first chapter, 56th Vachnamrut, Maharaj himself says that however grave a sinner a person may be at the end of his life, if he utters Swami Narayan, he will be redeemed of all of his sins and he will reside in Brahmul, meaning Akshradam. Now, you're probably wondering that Bhagwan, Bhagwan's words are Bhagwan's words. They will become true and no matter what. You just need faith. But the question is, Bhagwan says, however grave a sinner may be. Now, if we think about the glory, the greatness of Bhagwan's mantra, Swami Narayan, Bhagwan says that if one just chants it, or if one just chants it once, a grave sinner, then he'll reside in the divine abode of Akshradam. But when? at the end of his life. See that, that you can say that end of the life is the hardest part of the test. Because at that time, what happens? You remember everything that you're attached to in this world. Your mother, your father, your relatives, everything. And due to that, and due to that, one cannot, one cannot, one cannot uh, concentrate. However, a grave sinner a person may be, if at the end of his life he utters Swami Narayan, he will be redeemed of his sins and he will reside in Brahmwal. Akshradam. If we think about the greatness of Bhagwan Swami Narayan, by saying the mantra once, a grave sinner goes to Akshradam, then we chant Bhagwan's name. All of these devotees, all of these santos, they chant, they hear Bhagwan's name constantly throughout the day. Obviously, we can just see and say that they are the muktos, anadi muktos of Bhagwan Swami Narayan. It's just a matter of changing our vision, understanding. Small things occur where we might have some kind of miscommunications, but remembering that Sata Sangame Saba Aye Hejete Santa Hari Jana Bayo Tete Sabahe Mukta Anadihi Sobawa Babulaga Hetehi Something where we feel touched that something that we, we, we feel in our hearts that this is something that is true in Satsang. But we have to experience it. We have to experience and look at others in that perspective to understand this. It is true. If a grave sin, sinner goes to Akshradam, then those who are chanting Bhagavan's name right now, they are the attendees of Akshradam currently in front of us. Every day we look at them. Every day we have their darshan. Every day we even have their touch. Every day we get to talk to them, then imagine how grateful we have to be. Imagine how fortunate we are to be in their contact. May it be in Anadi Mukta as our Puja Guruji. May it be the Anadi Mukta in the form of Santos that we have received. May it be the Anadi Mukta in the form of Parsads. And may it be in the Anadi Mukta form of Hari Bhaktos but we have received them. They are not everywhere, you can say, that we can meet them outside in the street where people are walking. In this church right now, 
outside of this church every day. Thousands and thousands of people walk, cars go by. Who are they? And who are, the, who are those who live with us? We have to realize that these are not any ordinary people. We cannot call them people. Because if they are people, they cannot, they cannot possess these kinds of qualities. They cannot possess these kinds of, you can say, virtues where by even remembering their virtues, we become filled. By remembering their virtues, our mind's thoughts become suppressed. So due to that, going back to the topic, that chanting the name of Bhagwan Swami Narayan, it's such a great, great power that over here, Bhagwan says this in the Vachnarut, and in Pranvalab, in that time, he says that chant the name of Bhagwan Swami Narayan. He'll take you to his divine abode and he will save you from everything. Then Pranvala began clapping and taught everyone how to chant the mantra Swami Narayan. Everyone present was amazed and began singing the Swami Narayan Dun. It was as if the crematory had become a mandir. When the Dun ended, the Brahman's soul left his body again. Then again he left and he went to Akshardham. But Bhagwan says in the Bhakta Chintamni, it's noted, Mara janane antakade, jarudamare avavu, birudamaru enabadalete, sarave janane janavavu. Bhagwan says that whoever is mine, whoever has accepted me as their Lord, I will for sure take them to Akshardham no matter what. Now, there is no avatar or incarnation or any other god in this world that we humans have recognized and we have read in the scriptures who has given such kind of a statement to his disciples. Why? Because, remember, whoever has the strength to do so can make such kind of a statement. Sure, there's avatars that have incarnated, and we are respecting all. We are not downing any kind of incarnations. They are all worthy of just bowing down. But for worship, it's our Bhagwan Swami Narayan, the one who will take us to Akshardham, the one who will give us the bliss of his idol. That is only one, and that's Bhagwan Swami Narayan. To believe him to be supreme and almighty, to remember him throughout our days, to remember his charitras, to do his bhakti, to remain his and only his and no one else's, to become loyal to only him and his santos and devotees. These are the elements that will take us to Akshardham. There is nothing else needed, if you think about it. Everything we have is here within us. We just have to see it. We just have to change our perspective. And by changing our perspective, we can receive the bliss of Akshardham here on this earth. Because as our Puja Guruji says in his Katha, Akshardham is not where it is as we believe it to be far, far away. That's a false, you can say, you can say a, a, a false statement. Not so statement, but it's a false belief that people believe that Akshardham is so far away that we have to go there. Yeah, in this prasang, Bhagwan comes and takes our soul to Akshardham. It's a formality. But in reality, Akshardham is wherever Bhagwan's idol is. We have received Gansha Maharaj, his form. We can say we are in Akshardham. We have received sadhus, our puja guruji, in the form where Bhagwan himself lives in him and does all of his works, talks in him, walks through him, does each and every action through him, then we can say that if Bhagwan resides in him, then we are an Akshardham, we are associating with him. In each and every sadhu, in each and every devotee, Bhagwan himself resides. Then where are we? In Akshardham. But it's, ma it's just or just have to tweak the lens. If you've ever been to an eye doctor, I have, I have had glasses before and have been there, and what they do is to test our, you can say, vision. 
he first takes this, like you can say, this big like uh, binoculars kind of lens and puts it in front of you. And there's switches on the side of both of them. You can't see them. But what he does is in front, maybe about 10, 15 feet away, there's letters, um, lines of letters, numbers mixed up. Uh, as uh, it starts from big, and then as you go down, it goes a little low, uh, smaller and smaller. And what he does is he checks our eyes. Now, first, the, the first one's very easy, so anyone can get it. But once you go down a little bit, it becomes difficult. Those who have been to a doctor's, uh, eye doctor's office and have taken this, you can probably tell. And after the last line is the hardest line. And what he does is before he has dim lenses, but then once you get to the lower and you tell him, he asks you, can you see? You say, no, I can't see. So what he does is he, he switches the lens to a stronger lens. And he asks you again, again can you see? Uh, maybe a little, and maybe you get one or two letters right, but all the other letters are wrong, numbers are wrong. So again, he puts a little stronger lenses on. He says, can you see? You get maybe 70% right. And then finally, he adjusts everything to the perfect, your left eye, your right eye, the numbers. And then he gives you, you can say, the perfect lenses for both. And you just read it right away. In like two seconds, you read the whole line and you're done. What the doctor did was tweaked our vision in order to make it sharp. Once it became sharp, you were able to read the letters. In the same way, the Ekantik Satpurush, what he does is he tweaks our vision. Each and every Atma, each and every soul is capable of doing everything and anything to reach Bhagwan. But you need someone to ignite that fire. You need someone to sharpen that vision in the form of a doctor. And the Ekantik Satpurush, in a form of our Puja Guruji, Guruji, does that. And when he does that, then we are able to l read the letters and we were able to stay happy. We were able to remain happy. We were able to see others in a higher fashion. And due to that, Bhagwan himself becomes pleased. So, going off of topic a little bit, but coming back to the topic, death is something that we have and we have to take on. We cannot avoid. But something that is in our hands, something that we can definitely choose, is who's going to take us, death or Bhagwan Swaminare. And through this charitra, there's many lessons that we've learned, many elements that we can pick up by chanting the Mahamantra Swaminare. Not only that, but keeping faith, keeping the glory of Bhagwan, his sadhus, and his haribhaktos. These various elements will take us to Akshradam and Bhagwan will come to take us, no one else. So, Please understand and do not be afraid of death, but take it on and make it your friend so that Bhagwan comes and takes you to Akshardham. Saying this, my humble Jay Swaminari.